This is Abnormal Entertainment. I am a real American. Fight for the rights of every man. I am a real American. Fight for what's right. Fight for your life. You're listening to the No Cry Zone, a progressive political podcast on the Abnormal Entertainment Network. And welcome to the No Cry Zone. We are back again in Trumptopia. There's this has been a weird week, man. I mean, in a in a, in a group of weird weeks, it's this a, is pretty it's a, weird. It's a romantic comedy weeks. It's romantic comedy. Spicy and mooch. It's Spicy and mooch and the pickle. Yeah. <laughs> the pickles uh, are pickles. Spicy, the mooch, um, Kushner, the... <laughs> the cooch. The cooch. <laughs> Woo. Cooch and the mooch. The cooch, the mooch. mooch and the cooch. Cooch, um, the mooch, and the deuce. Stop the leaks by starting leaks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what right. the hell is happening? Um, I hear Conway's on the, on deck for the communications director. They're out of people, so they're like, well, right. hell, it, she can't do that bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't even... <laughs> where where do we begin? Was, I, I said we with, start with Pickles. Okay. Pickles the young boy that loves Donald Trump. Is that the Fox and Friends? Yep. Oh, yeah. He's real. He's real. He's real. Apparently, um, he has a friend named Donald, so that he thought that was neat. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't like people picking on others, so he thought people were picking right. on the president. Right. And he thinks that you're probably a really nice guy, so he had a Donald Trump-themed birthday party, yeah. a MAGA hat cake. Right. Which screams out white privilege. This uh, <laughs> You can't even... Like most, you know, a lot of kids around the world... Never even seen a cake, much less tasted a cake, but a Make America Great Again hat cake. Right. I can only imagine the price of that. And this is being brought to us by Fox. Yeah, These, but, but the kid is real. Right. But but the kid is being vaulted to prominence to shield the president who's hiding behind a small child. Not actively. I don't. But, I don't think he were vaulting the kid to prominence. It just it's just pickles. I understand that, but I'm just saying Fox, <laughs> of course. Doing everything in their power. Yeah, this is to, all they have. You know, this is, this is what they're down to. Uh, and you know, as we learned this week, that of course Fox uh, pushed forth the Seth Rich story. Yes, uh, yeah. Actively working uh, with the White House uh, to put forth this story that Seth Rich, this uh, Democratic operative who was murdered in, in in a burglary by what police say was just a, a, a robbery gone wrong. Uh, of course, they tried to make this in that he was, you know, killed by Clinton's people because he was giving all these. Uh, he he's the one that leaked all the information. He's the, he's the Russian leaker. He's the one. leaker. He broke into Podesta's computer. So, uh, so the fact that Fox would put forth pickles. I mean, they're just they're throwing they're hand grenades and gasoline at this thing. This to try is, it's, and, it's bizarre. It is yeah. so bizarre. I mean, if pickles is one of your you know last shots, right? Like, and the, 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 did you see the interview with the kid? No. Well, I, I, it was his mom was talking most of the time. Mm-hmm. The kid was terrified. I'm like, do you like pickles? Yeah. <laughs> well, my son likes pickles, too. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so, like, well, he had, wow. the, he had the biggest softball in the world of that Boy Scout speech and couldn't keep his mouth shut to save his life. So, well... You know, he might have to keep resorting to these pickles. To, to, to the pickle defense. Over and over. Well, uh, you know? and I saw, I just saw a Newsweek report today. The Boy Scouts said they also now actively go out of their way again and make a statement that because this is the third, yeah, this is the third now statement because Trump, in his interview, I believe with the New York Times, said the Boy Scout people called him up afterwards and oh, said it was yeah, one of the greatest yeah. speeches ever. Yeah. So the boys, so specifically the boys got asked like, and they're like, "Well, no, no, <laughs> we can't find that person. No, it could that, be the guy who gave you the time cut. Yeah, that call didn't really happen. It was um, a Mr. Pickles, who was a Boy Scout leader. <laughs> it was Pete Ickles uh, that called. Everyone's a derivation. Maybe he is Pickles. <laughs> P. Ickles is. Uh, Ickles. Has anybody after Bill. now the aftermath of the Boy Scout speeches? 
Does anybody notice like the theme? I thought it was a really good theme of the people who are turning in their in their their Boy Scout paraphernalia, whatever it may have been. They're they're saying this is enough is enough. They were most angry at the leaders in the crowd. Right. Yeah. You know? And behind the, the, the behind the yeah, I, I never blame you know, the kids. I, I mean, never blame the kids. They're, they're at a rally, like David was pointing out, having gone to a previous jamboree. Mm-hmm. They're just. Hey, they're having Don't fun. Cheer. You it's do what a, anyone okay, tells whatever. you to do from that stage. Exactly. So it was never about the the scouts themselves. Right. Uh, it was about the, the leadership parents. and yeah. yeah, and the rest. You know, they're supposed to like when they're you know I, I've never been a scout. Maybe you can, but I, they're supposed to be quiet and courteous and, and listen and, and not really get into those things. Unless they're at your jamboree. Well, all right. This is your jamboree. Your party time. Right. All right. Well, uh, you're there to cheer. Now, don't forget. True. That obnoxious speech was uh, one obnoxious speech ago because since <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring us up to date with obnoxious speeches. We are so behind. After them. speaking to this law enforcement gathering oh, in oh which he God. advocated police brutality. Mm. But that was then, a joke. It, oh, I was just kidding. Let him hit <laughs> And then uh. that Sanders, oh, this is like, you know, indignant. Oh, well, can't you tell it's a joke? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell it's not yeah. a joke. <laughs> I would just love to be a reporter there going, yeah, I'm looking at a joke right now. Mm-hmm. I can tell it's a joke because, well, he's he's not laughing. Um, actually, he seems kind of serious about this. It's, yeah. Oh, really? We he, should we should ram their heads against the car. Let's face it. He was getting a boner talking about uh, oh, ramming yeah. this suspect's head into the top of the cop car. You could tell because his hands got pale. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so much blood to go around. Right, and they're not going to go to his hands. Those are useless. Those are like T-Rex hands. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we have that. So we have a president who uh, politicizes speeches to Boy Scouts and then advocates for police brutality. Fires his chief of staff by leaving him on the tarmac of an airport. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> That's just awesome. You know, Lance Primus, get out. And uh, the, the one, the one guy that probably knew oh. how to work the whole system. Right. I mean, he's the RNC chair. It's a perfect choice for for working things out and making things happen. If you really wanted to work things out and make things happen, well, you've just hit the nail on the head. It clearly does not. And if fires was, Comey via TV. <laughs> right. Leaves Rex Rebus on the tarmac. How they fire the mooch? Uh, he was uh, escorted out. Uh, apparently, like by you know White House security. Well, literally. didn't that happen right at the first meeting with Kelly? Is yes, they had and that they was, had words, and it's like, okay, you're done. Right, okay, and, and that was John Kelly, the new chief of staff, asserting his authority, basically saying, "All right, this guy has to go." And in that sense, you're like, okay, if you were John Kelly, who would be the first person you'd say to go? Yeah, it would be Scar. Mm-hmm. Like, you can. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. And I, I saw that Mad Dog and Kelly have made a pact now to not be out of the country at the same time. They have, oh, I didn't see one, that. One of them ah. has, is going to stay behind to keep track of Donna. <laughs> really? Yep. That's... That's, wow! Yeah, that is. And, wow. and That's like taking care of your doddering old grandfather. <laughs> it really is. You know, one it's of like, us has to be home the whole it's time. It's like you two know. siblings working that out. Like, all right, look, I'm going to be gone at the end of August. You keep an eye on Dad. And then, uh, and then you know, when I come back, you can. I'll keep. An and like eye the, on the, the the Twitter meltdowns are, are the equivalent of shitting oneself. <laughs> <laughs> he is mentally incontinent. So, <laughs> so when we wake up and see a t- Twitter rant, it was, it's akin to getting a call saying Dad shit himself last night. Shit. John's calling Matt. Yeah. Like, I thought you were gonna be up. I fell asleep on watch. Come on. I gotta sleep. <laughs> oh, has gotta sleep. It's like he's a no. machine. He doesn't sleep. <laughs> he doesn't eat. He eats Big Macs and tweets. I can't. I don't even know where he's at. So the other thing I loved about uh, we learned about Priebus. Now I don't know that this was ever proven true, but I just love it anyway. Uh, supposedly Trump had called in uh, Priebus to kill a fly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, I don't know if that's office. true or not, but that had come out after Priebus was fired. So how was Spicy fired? I, he left. He he resigned he, officially. He resigned. Yeah, when the yeah. mooch came, that's yeah. Spicy left. Did he? Uh, uh, did they give him that fridgey stole <laughs> as a parting gift? <laughs> so, uh, it's Gary Mucci. When you think about, okay, this guy. So his wife divorces him. He misses the birth of his child because he's got this new gay. He's the president's man. His wife then files for divorce, says, fuck you, idiot. 
Uh, I'm nine months pregnant, right. and you're gone. <laughs> and you're gone. So, <laughs> so he, he misses the birth of his child. His wife files for divorce. Uh, the day that he's fired, it comes out that, because he's, he's a Harvard Law graduate, uh, which I'm sure Harvard's like, please don't mention that, <laughs> okay? Gosh. <laughs> and um, so apparently somebody went and looked at an old alumni magazine, and they have him listed as deceased <laughs> yeah. since, like, 2010. It was just a mistake, but... There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it a mistake? You're no. Right. Yeah. No, intellectually deceased. <laughs> since 2010. <laughs> Brain dead since 2010. He must have gotten, like, really good scores in, like, you know, uh, a f- presenting your final arguments with curse words. <laughs> with, with that class. <laughs> this cocksmoker ain't going to get no time until we get him into the jail. <laughs> and then his, his butler comes behind him and pays off the professor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was officially fired. For giving a uh, um, uh, uh, off the record, uh, on the record, and I called them off the record, yeah. <laughs> on the record, <laughs> right? Um, like uh, just tirade, tire, yeah. just a, a, a profanity laden interview. If that's grounds for firing, then we got to let go of Donald too. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know goose and gander stuff. Well, that's their that's their motto. They're, they're, they do that gangster try and scare you with their big talk. I mean, that's their whole administration is we have the mafia as our as our one staff anymore. now. No, <laughs> and the thing about Scaramucci was you're right. I think you're that that's their game plan. Their but game. the thing is, is he was so patently obvious that you could do nothing but laugh at him. Yeah, I right. almost think that that Trump was like, oh, they're laughing at. He was the equivalent of like Shit. casting Charles Nelson Riley as the Godfather. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, we're gonna have to put a whack on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to see that movie now. Now you want to see it? <laughs> right. the Godfather. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no, that's yeah. So he's out, and um, <laughs> by the mo- two and a half days. Yeah. Uh, Record. He for lasted this. ten days. Ten days. Officially, yeah. Record. But, he also officially, his, his official start date, I think, was sometime later in August, although he, he was coming into, so he officially has negative days he in the White House. The, the, the first <laughs> negative days. <laughs> wow. He but, lasted longer than uh, uh, Mike Flynn. Well. Not really. Uh, no. No, he no. did not. No. no He's he the shortest tenure so far. And so, and so somebody's going to have to, they've got a record now to shoot for. Ten some. days, we'll hold my beer. Uh, <laughs> Kelly's a, I don't know. Yeah. He just got there. Well, yeah. that could actually happen if uh, he fires Sessions and does another one, and that just right. use him to fire Mueller and We've got fire a new that FBI guy director. and a new guy. Right. He could do it. Right. There is a new FBI director. Yeah. There's like 200 unfilled positions. He could just bring people in and fire them instantly. Right. <laughs> well, so. and has anybody heard, are they going to go on recess? Because they, even the Congress no. is worried about him doing all those No, the Senate will. The Senate, which, now here's the interesting thing. Now, this is not a new tactic. No, no. What's new about it is is it's, it's they're doing it on, on their own party, on their own right. president. <laughs> okay. So this is tactic where they uh, a senator comes in every once, every couple days, gavels in, and then this whole, eh, eh, no one here, okay, gavels out, and officially that's a session, so therefore right. it counts as being in session. They have done. They did that to Obama a number of times to keep them in session so he couldn't make a recess appointment. Right. right. And, but they're doing it to their own president. Yeah. So who, like, who's the guy that's going to mess up and miss it? <laughs> you know? Who's going to oversleep? Right. Lark doesn't get the alarm. I say Trey Gowdy. <laughs> Gowdy's going to be the guy who's like, I just got my third haircut this week, and I was just tuckered out, so I couldn't do it. Uh, yeah. I don't even like you doing the impression of him, dude. Is he awful? I'm makes, pretty good at that one. Yeah, though. you are. It just it make, that guy makes me sick. I mean, he's, I watched, he's a, sick I watched a, a couple of hearings this past week, and his line of questioning is is un-American. And it is purely for his party's purposes. And it's, not even, it's not even for his party's purposes. It's for his, I mean, it's for this, uh, it's for the leadership's purposes. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, because you do, you're seeing, you're seeing the schism now, even within the Republican Party, between leadership and rank and file. Because more and more rank and file members are going, all right, what the fuck is going on? There's a working group of Democrats and Republicans that are separated from leadership. Uh, they're not part of the leadership on either party. And they've been working behind the scenes apparently for many months now on health care. 
Yeah. And they're trying to hammer out like these. Are, what? What? And they starting with the you know what do we agree on? What? Where can we start to agree? And then we can branch out from there. And apparently they've been you know uh, working this for several months behind the scenes, trying to come up with some sort of a compromise. Some uh, bipartisan fixes. Yeah, yeah. Some sort of fix, and they're doing Which it is... apart from leadership because leadership, in other words, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Yertle the Turtle in the Senate and uh, Paul Ryan in the in the House. They're never gonna. They would never start a group like this. They would never authorize a group Schumer like Pelosi this. would neither. You know, right? And and in a certain sense, you're right. And they, they were both. I heard an interview with the Democrat and the Republican leaders of these two uh, groups, and they both said they. And it was interesting. They said it about each other instead of themselves. But they said basically they're catching shit from their leadership on this. They each said it about the, well, my my opponent, my fr- good friend across the aisle is catching quite a lot of shit from his leadership. And then the other goes, well, my good friend across the other aisle is catching a lot of good shit from his leadership. And it's interesting how they're both like, so they can both say, well, like, I never said that about you. It was right. the other guy. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, so. this, is a, this is a power play for the middle. I mean, that's what all of that is, is they're all scheming and trying to figure out where the votes are and who's got the power. And With this, though, I think it's, a little, it's, it's such a concentrated group. I think there's actually some legislators in there. Mm-hmm. So right, people, right. The people who are willing to govern. Been held hostage. I'm like, well, what the, well, I like you people. <laughs> right. I like you well, all now. Look <laughs> at, look, hey, look at the sanctions, which, by the way, Trump did just sign. With the signing statement. Right, of course, well. Uh, but did sign nonetheless. It went into law. But that was an overwhelming uh, majority. Only five members of Congress in both the House and Senate, I think three in the House and two in the Senate, voted against the sanctions. That's overwhelming. And for this Congress over the past, you know, 20-some years, to get that that kind of bipartisan support, it, A, because Trump isn't, it was a message from Congress to Putin directly. Mm-hmm. Like, he ain't the only one in charge. You know, right. you, with this, right. this this is not Russia, okay? There is a divided government here. We have a balance of power. There's also a message to Trump. <clears throat> and a message to Trump. To, yeah, um, could be such a dick. Right. <laughs> so, the point is, is when you have that overwhelming support on something like that, it does enable these other groups like this to say, all right, we agree on this. Shit, can't we agree on something else? There's got to be something else. I made a statement this week that I never thought I would make. I agree with Jeff Flake. Mm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> After living under Jeff Flake for a little bit of time in right. the old desert, I can tell you that he is uh, pretty much batshit conservative crazy. Right. Uh, about privatization. He wants, you know, you know the usual conservative thing. But he's also apparently a citizen, too, which I'm glad to see. Well, Finally, some people step up. Right, and he's, he's got a book out. A book that he let the Times excerpt and the right. Post excerpt. And it, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, Donald, leave me alone, I think, something like that. Uh, <laughs> Didn't he reuse the Barry Goldwater title? It, he, yeah, he, yeah, The Conscience of a Conservative was Barry Goldwater's book, and I think he kind of plays off that. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically he's saying, hey... Republicans, hey, not even Republicans, hey, conservatives. Right. This administration does not represent our values. So, you know, stop, we have to stop going down. Uh, it's called committed conservative. Committed conservative. Um, well, I mean, so they can stand there and say that all day long, and until they stop taking money from people to get elected, well, it that, will continue to happen. That's not, that's, I mean, that's immaterial to this point. This point is, is standing in. I mean, how you got there, how you got there is going to be how you get there. Standing in opposition to this administration is different than taking money to get there. True. So this that's what I think is unique about this is it's a public stand in opposition, and you know, going into detail, like we in in the in the uh, excerpt that I read. Uh, they went, he went into detail about how we doubled down on this guy and we lost all our morals and values and principles and this is, we just, we messed up. Mm-hmm. The Which is an interesting public well, statement to make. Right, and we all saw that but happening. Let's, yeah, we, which is good to hear one okay, of them but say. But let's right. not go overboard. I mean, let's, t- it's good to hear, mm-hmm. yeah. but, but let's remember where it's coming from. And the interesting thing was Flake then said, when asked about the comparison to Barry Goldwater's Conscious of Conservative, he favorably said that the direction the Republican Party took after Goldwater shellacking, you know, like that was a good thing when, in, you know, I think from our perspective, you look at it, that's when the party 
headed down the road towards the Southern strategy right. and the the racial divide and 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 I'm and, just talking and, baby you know. steps for. I agree. Me. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But but you know, no one should be uh, under any impression that. Uh, that they're going to be suddenly, yeah, oh you know, God, there's no uh, you know to come. right, you know, suddenly supporting Planned Parenthood or uh, uh, anything else. No, I just want to get back to a sense of even, I don't care how you got there right now, we'll talk about the money later and fix right. that at some other point. Right. Let's just start talking together. Well, it is a, it is a good thing to see, uh, you know, the MSNBCs of the world quoting the Republican senators yeah. that are opposed. I mean, if they, they don't get that press, then it looks as though that they are in support, so... And they desperately all, want that press. Yeah, so right. I'm all in, all in favor of everybody, you know, bringing out those things because that is going to be what changes the tide. Well, and it's going to be the external factors that you're going to find most agreement on. So, in other words, Russia, mm-hmm. uh, our allies in NATO, yeah, not uh, going to war in you Korea, know, uh, <laughs> not going to war in Korea. You know, I've seen a, a good old Barry uh, Obama blamed for the Korea thing oh, so many times right now. You know what? This is if we're going to blame somebody. Let's get back to Ike. Yeah. <laughs> really, I, I would think it would go all the way back to Truman. Yeah, yeah. Dropping the bomb would start this all going. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the, the, well, we won't. That's a, yeah, that's yeah, a that's, different that's, policy that's discussion. Good, yeah. We'll go. We'll, we'll yeah. have a, that'll be uh, episode 96-A. If yes. we're alive. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll have a separate podcast we'll for a our separate, podcast. Yeah, yeah. A web version. <laughs> so your birthday happened before we got blown up. I don't think mine will. Yeah. That's November. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what's going to happen? I figured out what's going to happen. Before the Rotten Tail movies released, my first major motion picture, right. we're going to get blown up. No, you know what will happen? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. It, so it'll get see. released. It'll get released. It'll be premiere night. Okay? You'll be, you'll pull up, there'll be crowds, you'll be like, my moment. Before I get out yeah. of the door. You'll open the door, and right then there'll be a flash. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> You just get out of fuck before you turn into a pile of ashes. And I won't turn into a pile of ash. I'll die of radiation poison slowly, <laughs> but everyone around me will turn into ash. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's something to hope for. Well, you know, let's hope it never gets released then. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, here we are. Yeah. And uh, we, we continue forward. We're um, about to go to war with North Korea. Um, we're going to go to war with Israel and uh, the rest of the Middle East if Kushner goes back. Yeah, probably. <laughs> or, Did you or see his, his little speech to the, uh, the, uh, the staffers that was leaked? No. Okay, so uh, Kushner comes up to talk to the, some of the staffers, and um, they say, you know, before this, if there's any, anyone asks you to leak, it's a terrible thing. And he was talking about uh, the Middle East problem. He's like, I don't know what to do over there. It's like they've already, we've already done everything that anyone else has already done. <laughs> what do we do? And the, 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 you know, the 20 and 21-year-old <laughs> interns are like, ah, we, we, we don't know, sir. <laughs> you had the plan. Aren't you in charge of that and <laughs> fixing the economy? Who would have thought the Middle East would be complicated? <laughs> you know? <laughs> do you guys think that they're, like, feverishly reading Obama's books? <laughs> 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 uh, get out of the archives. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Donald's not. <laughs> no, he's no, having them no, read. To, he not. is not feverishly reading anything. He's having them it's, read to him in the Reader's Digest condensed versions from Bannon. Right. Yeah, I think the only then thing he said, <laughs> "I was born in Kenya." Ha ha. Fuck Donald Trump. <laughs> like, really, really? Just she said that in the book. Right. It's in the book. It's right there. Um, <laughs> yeah. The only thing he feverishly reads is People magazine. I'm sure. And the scroll at the bottom of the Fox News channel. <laughs> right. I think that's a little much for him. It probably he's, is. You're right. Be. He's too dazzled by the, oh the blonde God. on Fox. And well, oh, and, oh, and we're forgetting, you know, now, uh, this week we also learned that the president himself dictated this statement to Donald Jr. about the meeting with the Russian... I mean... How many goddamn revelations are we going to have this week? I told you it was a weird week. I mean, oh my God. And more than all the other ones, the other ones are all just icing. To me, this is the cake because that puts him squarely, and by the way, admittedly, because he eventually had to come out and say, well, yeah, I helped draft it because there was no other way, but he was pinned down. Uh, This puts him squarely in the conspiracy to collude. This puts him right in the middle of it. There's no sure. saying I had nothing to do with it. So do you think that like he was just watching TV and like <laughs> Don, DT comes in and Dad, 
I kind of screwed up. Did, did you wreck the car? Like, no, no, I sort of colluded with some Russians. Yeah. Hey, we had a meeting. <laughs> like, that meeting with Jared? Oh, I thought you guys were... I don't know what you We're going to get some pierogies or something. Um, and he's got Lifetime on. And on the Lifetime channel, they're doing an adoption movie. It's like, oh, hey, wait a minute. Just tell him it was all about adoptions. <laughs> that'll do it. You, you, you think so, Dad? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll work. It'll work. These it's people nothing. are stupid. They're stupid. Now, let me get back to that. i got to see what happens when, uh, you know, uh, oh, uh, Valerie Bertinelli gets the kid or not. Oh, wait, that's Judith Light. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Richard Grieco's the rapist. He's always the rapist. <laughs> Love that Grieco. <laughs> so. Hey, do you think he'd take the communications director spot? <laughs> okay, well, maybe Homeland Security. Obama hired Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... So, oh dear God. Um, so, so, Lifetime Channel colluded with the president who colluded right, with the Russians. Right. So, so, the president admitting that he helped to draft the statement, which, which was basically a lie. <laughs> What's uh, the meeting about? You know, uh, adoption. Right. But totally a lie. The best part of all this was the thing that makes all of this a lie is Don Jr. releasing his fucking email stream. <laughs> The whole thing, here it is, and admitting it. Yeah, it's all true because, again, if you rewind this tape back to that moment, and he does not release the emails, right? They could still, they could still claim. They would still be able to at least publicly claim that he said, she said. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not how. That's not what happened. No, no, that's all. You know. Now, you know, Mueller would have the emails. Uh, and and so later on, it would still be thrown against them. But by him just releasing them en masse, and, and this shows that these guys, you know how you talk about uh, uh, people like Obama or others who they're always thinking three step, three plays ahead on the chessboard. You know, the the real players are always several steps ahead. Like he'll do this, I'll do this, you do that, and then I'll do this, and I got gotcha. you. They're three steps behind. Every time. No, I mean, no, they're not no. even playing chess. They're 57 obviously. steps ahead. Yeah, right. they, they fired the mooch before he started. <laughs> right. They are so smart. I'm sorry. Well, and they're even using that as an excuse. Like, oh, we couldn't have colluded. We were just idiots. We should not have to do it. Right, right. I'm new. I don't understand. We, could, we couldn't even collude with our own staff. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. It reminded me of the uh, the, old, the old Saturday Night Live bit uh, with uh, Phil Hartman that I used to love where he was the Neanderthal caveman lawyer. He's That's like, right. oh, your modern ways of uh, law are confuse me. I don't understand them. You know, and that's exactly how they acted on this, right? I, Maybe they were watching Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I'm like, Nick, <laughs> hey, should we pull the caveman lawyer? Right. Yeah, operation caveman lawyer. We couldn't collude with ourselves. It's just it's so complicated. We can't even decide what's for lunch. <laughs> the last time someone decided, they fired ranch. <laughs> <laughs> and all I said was, we don't want ranch. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> all right, he's gone. Wait, who? What? Wait, Nothing. Who, what? Nothing. I didn't want any ranch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> As the plane's taking off. Wheels <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 like, and Bannon's looking out the window. Uh, sorry. He's got his jet bag on. <laughs> they didn't even tell him. His bag falls out. <laughs> Oh God! Well, Bannon's got to be running around there in disguise by now, uh, don't you think? Like, no, he's hoping, he, hoping no one notices he's there. No, he's the guy now. He's the no, man. I think he's always been the man. He's I the think man. he's always been the man. He's the only one that can't yeah. get busted for this Russian thing right now. <laughs> you know what? And Bannon, whatever you think of the guy, the guy is a turd of a human being, uh, but he is not as dumb as the rest of them. Let's put it that way, which is a pretty low bar, but nonetheless, uh, he's probably smart enough to have kept himself out of this whole Russia shit. You're right. Yeah. So when all goes imploding, he can just kind of step back over to Breitbart and be like, President okay. Bannon yeah. steps in. <laughs> right. Well, I've rewritten the Constitution <laughs> while you were out. Right. We're going to have a Pence wig on, and suddenly Pence is just gone. <laughs> what happened to Pence? I'm right here. <laughs> you're, you're Steve Bannon in a, in a Magneto wig. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm Pence. God, God, love God, Jesus. Hey, it is Mike Pence. <laughs> My God, it is. Holy shit. <laughs> President well, no, Pence, no, no. what do we do? No, if he said that, they'd be like, you're not Mike Pence. He's like, hate the gays. Oh, yes, you are Pence. I'm sorry. I'm still not convinced. Burn them alive. <laughs> and then roast them and feed them to the poor. Ooh, he is Mike oh my Pence. God. 
he's the real Pence. <laughs> oh, so, well, you know, at this point, you just, I can't decide whether should, you know, whether there's going to be an implosion or, in other words, whether this thing, because, I mean, after the Scaramucci thing, you're just like, oh my God, this, this thing is just so off the it's so weird. There's, it's, a, there's like a 37% unemployment rate in the White House. <laughs> That's messed up. <laughs> That's higher than like right. Kansas. Right. Well, and then, yeah, so I don't know if it's whether it's going to implode of its own stupidity, which is a lot. It's quite a lot of gravity. I don't know, man. I'm you know, so they, much fun they got now. physicists working formulas on the stupidity <laughs> factor in that place. Or whether we have to wait for a Mueller action. Because that's going to be a while. That's not yeah. going to happen in the short term. And, you know, the favorite thing is about Mueller is that he has not said a word. I, yeah. I think that is just oh, the, yeah. best, the best investigator I've seen because so far. the I pros mean, never do. Yeah. And that's probably driving Trump insane. Yeah, and they're they're after him hard. They're, oh, yeah. They're, with his Comey connection. He oh, you guys are buddies. You guys, yeah. you guys can't be. You, 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 you can't got do this. people that have wives who has a friend that's named Hillary. You can't investigate me. Work up. <laughs> Wait, still? <laughs> yeah, right. that's what they want. Oh, yeah. They're back oh, at yeah. it. Oh, God, they never stopped. Mm. They never stopped about the Clinton thing. And she's just hanging out. You know what? you know who uh, will ultimately prove, it, it, it would not surprise me, look, when Watergate was said and done, I mean, we only just learned, you know, what, 10 years ago, even less than that, who Deep Throat really was. Right. And it was Al Patrick Gray, who was the acting uh, head of the FBI at the time. A lot of people suspected it, but there was never any proof. And then finally he admitted it just before he died. So, uh, you know, whoever the deep throat of this administration will be, in other words, whoever is really going to turn on Trump. It's Kelly could, Conway. Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be Bannon. I thought it had been direct, literally how you got your job. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Oh, oh, oh we're talking about a leader. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that, I mean, I would different. not surprise me if Bannon is at the center of all this. Of the leaks? Of the leaks and the person who will ultimately turn on Trump to put on his golden parachute and say, bye bye. Yeah, it was interesting during the Rebus thing that. Uh, <laughs> That's his new name. Rebus. <laughs> Rebus. <laughs> uh, that he. <laughs> Got blamed for all that. That that was so yeah. publicly. Oh, yeah. oh, it was it was him. It was him. So because, that made me think that it was somebody else, and, it, and the only really it other like, person it would be like Bannon. Someone whispered in the Mooch's ear mm -hmm. that it's Brebus, it's Brebus, <sighs> and Mooch goes on this completely public tirade, <laughs> which he then later claimed, "Well, uh, that was supposed to be off the record." And you're like, "Okay, if it was off the record, then you were leaking." Because you were giving information that would be considered a leak if it was off the record. You know, sources tell, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. But it was on the record because you never requested it to be off the record. I love how people never quite figure that out. They, they'll, I, I, I killed Lincoln, by the way, that's off the record. No, it doesn't work Too that late. way. No. <laughs> well, you know, they, you got to admit, they, they're, they're a little skewed because you can, like, work for a foreign country and then register later. Here. Well, sure. So, you know, like, oh, God, I took a bunch of money from the Ukrainian. Uh, I, I had to say that. I'm saying it now. Right. <laughs> well, it's like uh, Kushner in his, uh, you know, disclosure form. Yep. Yeah, it keeps amending it. it and four then, times now? Uh, yeah. Gone back? I, I don't understand how that's possible. I don't understand how that's not a criminal ooh, charge. Ooh, ooh, yes, charge, you. Charge. You in the front Your father-in-law is the president. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's it. Damn it, you're right. Yeah. You see if, uh, like, Malia Obama tried that one, <laughs> they would lock her up. They'd send her to North Korea. Here, we got one more for you. You know, <laughs> if, if Malia misrepresented her weight, right. you know, <laughs> okay, I don't know. Well, I don't want to say I'm 120. Yeah, that's one, 115. You know. Lock her up! <laughs> so one of the, like, like, if one of the Bush daughters said they like had one beer less than they really did that <laughs> night. Yeah. So, um... We're fucked. No, no, no. We're having fun now. Now it's now like all of our greatest fears, I think, have been allayed aside from this foreign, you know, war stuff. I don't know. Though. No, I, I think know. we're just not... now getting into the heart of it. No, it, 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 we we expected like the worst case scenario was he comes in with a Congress and he changes and he does awful, okay, horrible, right. terrible things. Now we're like the buffoonery. Yeah, is it, we're we're stagnant. We're not moving forward as a country. We're still divided. We're still piles of shit happening all over the place. But there's no active meddling going on. Anything that requires legislation, you're right, isn't going to happen. Right. But the things that are under the purview of the executive branch, 
i.e. the military. That shit still worries me. Oh, yeah. No, I'm that he will, worries. Yeah, that he will start a shooting war. I said, aside order. from war shit. You know. yeah. <laughs> right. Everything else is peachy keen. <laughs> Keep buffooning. Well, well, wasn't there in the new sanctions bill something against Iran that's going to piss him off? And yes, that's there's something right in the new country? sanctions bill, actually, that prevents the president from having unilateral power, too. So there's a, we've got to start going through Congress again. Right, and that was a good thing. And Congress, by the way, and, and that is a provision that should be in a lot of these. The, the the legislative branch needs to start clawing back some of the authority that it has been ceding to the executive branch for decades. For decades. Not just Trump, not just Obama. I mean, for decades, the legislative has ceded a lot of its authority. And you can really trace a lot of that back to... Harry Truman in the Cold War in 1947, they signed the National Security Act. There's a it's a, a, a presidential executive order, and uh, basically creating the national security state. It creates the CIA, it creates the NSA, and and basically it was in response to the Cold War and and the fact that we're now a nuclear power, and so we've we've ceded this tremendous amount of authority to the individual and the person of the presidency. Because we felt we had to. Because, well, the Russians could bomb us any second. They could fire their missiles. And we have to have somebody in charge that can make a decision. Assuming, <laughs> assuming that that person would be rational mm-hmm. and would act in the best interests of the United States. Well, Trump has proven that now to be false. And so this Trump is the first example, I think, of a president who, forget their policies, you don't, you, you literally don't trust with the button. I don't trust him. I don't trust him not to fire off a nuke. I really don't. I don't trust him not to respond in a way that is going to get us into a, a hot war. So the executive branch has been given way too much authority through the decades. And I think it's time now for the legislature. And that was a one little little piece, little clawback that you I would like to see more of. The legislative right. needs to start assuming more of its authority, most especially when it comes to making war. Okay? So no more. Because, look, Johnson in the Vietnam War, I mean, the Congress basically gave him a blank check, and they that was a ceding of the authority. Okay? They they basically passed the Tonkin Gulf Resolution and said, uh, whatever you think you need, go for it. And that was a blank check for him to do whatever the fuck he wanted in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. And that was a giving up your authority. We went to a war... It's called the Vietnam War. It was called the Korean War, by the way, not the Korean police action, which is they, they're legally, oh, it's a police action, therefore we don't have to declare war. No, Congress should have to declare war. Just as after 9-11, Congress should have, had, Congress should have declared war on Afghanistan. Right. Because when you declare war, it's not about because, oh, that way we have this overwhelming response and all the rest, but you are... Everyone's got skin in the game. That's how the system works. Right. It, but by not doing that, so we need to see more of that. I, I, you know, even though Congress is essentially run by a bunch of fucking idiots right now, big picture, we need to see more power brought back into the into the legislative branch, especially when it comes to making war. And for future elections and things like of that nature, how many times did that get brought up? You know, you voted for the Iraq War, you right. voted for this, right. you voted for that. I mean, those are the type of things that you are trying to gain out of your senators who are trying to become a president or right. or claw their way up the ladder. Is so, what is your voting record? If they're not voting on anything, but consequential, then it, it's really hard. I didn't expect it now. I didn't expect it with this Congress and this president. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there, there really is a lot of fear, uh, even among conservatives, about what this guy can do. Well, Al Franken came out and said that even some of his Republican colleagues are now coming to him wondering about his mental fitness. You know, yeah. it was like, hey, this guy's crazy. You know, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, <laughs> you all, said it. Yeah. When, when you've got Kelly and McMaster, was yeah. it Kelly McMaster? Kelly and or, Mad Dog. Or, or Mattis. Mattis. Mattis when Kelly. either one of them is like, uh, we we got to keep an eye on this guy. I think it's for precisely that reason, not for any tweet storm or or legislative bullshit. It's mm-hmm. for exactly him 
mishandling or misreacting to events. And he did the same thing about the uh, the transgender ban. He said, oh yeah, I called up the military. We've been in, in the military. He said, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, know, I mean, it's, it, it's, you can understand it's, the pattern. It threw the military into a it. complete panic. Right. You know, like, it's a, it's a tweet, an executive order. And we're like, no, we're going to go say no. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> right. And no one's losing any jobs right now. Everyone stand down. But what right. the hell? And uh, well, well, the whole nature of, I mean, that, that, get, that gets us in a whole different arena. So the nature of social media and the tweets, are they official statements? And r- right now, the courts are ruling that they are. And in fact, they've ruled, there was a recent uh, hearing, a federal court ruling that said, if you're a publicly elected official, you can't block people from your Twitter account right. or your social media in any way. You can't block them. Yeah. Because that's your official avenue for information. You you can't say only some citizens have access to information. No, right. they all do. Right. You're not allowed to block. And it'll be interesting to see how and if they can apply that all the way up to to Trump because he's blocked a number of people because he you know doesn't want to see their shit on his you know doesn't like the fact that they criticize him. Right. Although I find it I find it find it quite funny that there are and God bless them that are out there. There's folks out there who. It seems like they they are constantly, you know, refresh, refresh, refresh on his Twitter, waiting for his latest pronouncement, and then they jump on it. And it's funny because it almost seems like they'll have stuff preloaded that they can just boom, 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 whenever he makes a, a tweet. And then they just post, you know, ev- endless stuff against him, like in answer, you know. Okay, Cittolini, okay, whatever. I mean, just one after the other, and it almost... It, it, and then you get about 10, 12, 20, 50 responses down, and then finally one of his supporters will get a word in edgewise, kind of like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. And um, so it, I'm sure, and that's led to him trying to uh, block these people more and more, the ones that are very a- active in that way. You can't mm-hmm. do it. You can't do it. These are official pronouncements. We're seeing congressmen that are doing that. Uh, here in the 8th District, Mike Bishop has blocked a number of individuals. Right. A lot of congressmen have. I'm sure even some Democrats have. I'm not trying to say this is just a Republican thing. But, as crazy as crazy. you know, it should be, I mean, it needs to be, and it so far is, set a law that you can't do that, that that's public information. So, is a tweet an executive order? No. But is it an official statement? Yes. yes. Uh, is the military bound to follow an official statement? Not really. Well, they not, need to. I don't think know, it's a good idea. You know? <laughs> so and they obviously do not think this was a good idea. Right. Well, you know, Mike Rogers mentioned this. Is you know, I really don't think Donald Trump is tweeting those things so much as to, you know, inform people, but to change the nar- narrative yeah, yeah. away from things. And and he he said that during you know past Russian. This is the head of NSA. Past Russian things, you never saw one of our people jumping on board to the active mu- measures from a from a from a player abroad. Mm-hmm. And this time, because social media has been so great, he would use that. He would use things that were already trending in social media across the world, pick up on it here, make the trend go even further. And now he's still continually doing that. And and I can understand why he would want to block people. It's messing up his trends. It's, it, you know, people come out and see that stuff. It's not what he's trying to accomplish. I think he should actually just eliminate that Twitter account altogether. Yeah. And and do something differently well, right in the government websites. You know, he has right. that power now. But he no, does not need that any longer. But but he won't get the play. Logically he need doesn't need that. Um, narcissistically and emotionally. Yeah, true. With 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 like yeah. with, like severe personality disorders, yep. he needs it. Oh yeah. This is a need. Yeah. He he can't he won't be stopped. He told yeah. he said Kelly tried to get him to stop the day he came in, like I won't be stopped. Mm-hmm. People need the truth. Yeah. So that's great. Oh, please tweet away. Yeah, it really tweet hasn't like helped. Like the wind, him. Uh, you know. It might, you know, because his base isn't going anywhere. Yeah, so there's, there's those thirty six percent of the people that are just going to believe whatever. Mm-hmm. They're done. Forget it. Um, and there's the rest of us who uh, enjoy the comedy, and it's not stopping Mueller. It's not stopping Congress um, from doing things slowly, very slowly. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, you know again we're we're stuck with very loud supporters, and not many of them. 
Yeah. So uh, just like you know, I think I think we're getting back to a little bit of normalcy as far as the squeaky wheels are concerned, because it was the unsqueaky wheels that got him elected. Yeah. And those are still still out there and still you know kind of horrified for the most part about what he's been doing and or what a lack of. Well, and, and a lack of again when we talk about Russia, uh, you know, R- Russia and its very activist. Foreign policy. Oh, yeah. uh, just to report the, this morning, <laughs> that the Pentagon and the State Department have sent plans to supply arms to Ukraine to the White House for approval, a prospect that would deeply unsettle Moscow at a time of chilled relations between the U.S. and Russia. And of course, Putin very much does not want that. No. And uh, but 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 Trump is really trapped in a lot of ways because you've got you've got his own. You know, you've got the Pentagon, you've got the State Department, you've got. People like Mattis, and you've got people uh, like Kelly and others who recognize the threat of Russia and that we can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. But you know Trump is trapped because clearly Putin has something over him. Well, clearly. And, uh, you know, what Trump does here is going to be very interesting. Well, and his budget is telling, too, is, you know, all of these people are coming up, and, and, and the congressmen, even Republicans, are asking, what can we do? We know it's going to be happening more and more. What should we be doing? They're all giving you all these answers like, you know, hey, we should make uh, Homeland Security's part cybersecurity. We should make NSA report to these guys. They have these great ideas, all require budget, you know, uh, changes. And here all the budget for the military and for intelligence is going to, you know, conventional war items. Um, Tomahawk missiles and battleship carriers and, and those type of things where he is completely ignoring the one threat that everybody in the whole country is on their head about you know Mm -hmm. so that one thing on top of all of this has got to start to come together to some people you know like hey he's just even if even if he didn't win by all of the shit that nbc's telling you know america all that's bullshit it's still a matter of intelligence community fact that they did this and our president is doing nothing Right. Nothing. Right. And taking money away from those departments as well. It's crazy. Well, but what's telling, what's more telling is when he doesn't say something. Russia just kicked out yeah. all the U.S. delegates. Yep. Booted them, shut down the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, 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 what do you call those? Well, see, actually, that's actually a, a good thing, because Putin wants to see that in the news. Right. Putin wants to be headlines for, for booting them all out, and, and we're not supposed to say anything but, at that point. But zero from yeah, the White nothing. House. Nothing from the White House. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, by the way, that the expulsion, uh, or, or of, a lot of those are going to be Russian citizens who will just no longer be allowed to work for the U.S. any longer. Right. They have to have that many less staff. Uh, you know, it, it's... <laughs> Uh, the, but the fact that Trump did s- said nothing, that not even a perfunctory statement, it's just ridiculous. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. It's dumb. I don't care if there really is a PP video, mm-hmm. and, and that Putin has it. If you're Trump, you know there's no reason why you wouldn't put out a statement. I mean, Putin, okay, whatever. Just even a, just a statement of, you know, we we you know just a, just a basic. We regret this. Uh, you know, we think this is the wrong response, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, uh, vitriolic or mm-hmm. anything like that. Just a statement, a bland statement of regret or something like that. But he can't even do that. He won't even do that. Right. I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's and, and frankly, you know, the, what, what it's going to mean, by the way, is all we're going to do, all we're probably going to end up doing is closing our consulates in various other cities in Russia, and we'll focus our staff in Moscow where they need to be. So the thing is, is those consulates largely what it's going to do is it's going to make it, it, it it's going to make it harder for tourists from the U.S. to want to want to visit Russia. Right. Russia's a pretty big fucking country, and you don't want to be a thousand miles from your embassy. You'd like to, you know, maybe there's something within two hundred miles of St. Petersburg or wherever. Right. Those consulates are going to close because they're just going to concentrate staff in Moscow. So it's going to deter tourism. And it's also going to make it harder for Russians who want to come to the U.S. to just shop. 
Mm-hmm. All right, or to, to vacation or whatever. It's going to make it more difficult for them because they got to get visas. Mm-hmm. So if you're in Vladivostok, well, get on the train and four nights later you can be in Moscow to get your visa. You know, it, it, so it's, it's a tit for tat that largely adversely affects Russians, but this, Putin doesn't care. It, it's, you know, it's his, you know, uh, reaction to that. He, he, he could have done things that were much more, if he was truly wanted to punish the U.S., this was a very symbolic gesture, is what I'm saying. Yeah. The U.S. can can work with this. I yeah, mean, this, it, they'll work around it. It's like this it's a back and forth. It's a pain in the ass, years. but we'll we'll work around it. If he yeah. really wanted to, you know, dick us, he would have. I mean, it, it, you know, you can blockade in ways. You can you know blockade an embassy, not literally blockade it, but you can find ways to make sure that you know suddenly. Uh, Deliveries can't make it to the front door or anything. You right. could really be a dick about it sure. and move on to a, a further footing towards confrontation. He wasn't interested in that, I think. And largely because of that overwhelming vote from the Congress. Because that really was a wake-up call to Putin. Like, you, you aren't going to get your way. You're not going to get your way on this. There are going to be sanctions. The sanctions aren't going away. And really, in a certain sense... This was the first indication I would like to think to Putin, because he's, I think he's a practical guy at the end of the day. Uh, not, not, a, not, not a rational guy, not a nice guy, but he's practical. Uh, that this is the first, I think, indication that maybe you went too far in 2016. Maybe the collusion and the election interference, there is a price to pay for it. Yeah, you got your guy in. But we've so we've so hemmed him in. Number one, your guy is a blithering mother effing idiot. Okay, <laughs> that's the first thing. So secondly, he is so hemmed in, you have no leverage over him anymore. Your leverage is minimal at mm-hmm. best. So the the thing that you most wanted. I mean, we talked about this before. A lot of this, I think, goes back to them wanted to put that fucking pipeline through Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, to to run that oil up and make billions of dollars, and they can't do it with the sanctions in place. And not only are the sanctions remaining in place, they're tightened now. So if you're Putin, and the whole point, the whole point of your 2016 effort to subvert the election was to get rid of those sanctions, it's a failure. It's a failure. It has failed. Yeah, you got your guy in, but he's a blithering idiot, and he can't really do the one thing you really wanted him to do. You've got some wins in that the U.S. is neutered, uh, you know, in its agenda worldwide, okay, we're somewhat, we're not, you know, as activist as we used to be, and that gives him a little bit more room to play. But on the key issue, from everything I've read, everything anyone has said, it, it was really about getting those sanctions lifted, that he definitely didn't want Hillary Clinton. Because he knew if Clinton wins, those sanctions stay. we got to get rid of Clinton. And they did, and the sanctions are still there. It's a right. failure. Well, I think there is a strength of NATO aspect to Putin as well. He has always been, since he's been in power, very cautious of the, the European nations and the NATO nations being too close, too far away, where, you know, that they're, they're, they're amassing forces, and he, he would have to go amass forces there. I think if he was on a win-lose column, he would still be winning at this point. Because he is, Trump has come in and, and upset 40 years of diplomacy, um, I don't know if we can ever get back. I mean, we, we'll get it back with probably uh, uh, Germany and, and, and England and maybe Ireland, but there's going to be, you know, some right. South American countries that are in NATO. Are they in NATO? No. Uh, no, North American. Uh, uh, there's going to be countries that are in the middle. You know, they're too close to Russia. They're too close to, you know, make that power play with NATO, and that will win in, right. in the long run. Right, well, look at, look at what's run. happening in Poland. Mm-hmm. I mean, Poland was a country that had was going the route of becoming more democratic, more market-oriented, more Western-aligned, mm-hmm. and now it is beginning to turn back to its more autocratic nature, yep. more Moscow-focused, more t- tilting in that, not, fa- not, not as an ally, but tilting in that direction right. more, and yeah, you're right. I mean, a, a, a lot of it, at least, it, it started before Trump was elected, but Trump being elected and then sort of devaluing yeah. NATO helps to move that process forward. So you're right. Yeah, There's things you know, that there will be consequences. But yeah, he. I don't think he's getting the game that he thought he was playing. Absolutely. I, I really think 
he thought Trump would be better at right. keeping it a secret. <laughs> you know, this, this would not in be general. in the Daily just, News. Just better in general. Yeah. yeah. But, and that's really what's hemmed him in, is the story is, is on 24-7 on every television station right. around the world, not just even in America. And that's what's really lost the, the leverage for Putin. Yeah. And that was really just a Trump idiocy thing, you know? Why, you know he he if, could have played it so much oh, smarter. Oh, God! You know? <laughs> Look, if, if, if Trump had come in, and I mean, right from the get-go... When you think about from the inauguration forward, my crowds are bigger and young. Right from the get-go, this is a guy who expected us to to say two plus two equals five, yeah. and we were supposed to go, yes, it does, dear leader. And people, when people refuse to say two and two equals five, in other words, I refuse to look at this picture of this crowd and say it's Big. bigger than it is. And just why are you fighting and dying on this hill? Mm -hmm. This first hill that you've come to, and it's not even a hill, it's like it's, a, it's an anthill, and you've tripped over it. Yeah. I mean, and right from the get-go. But see, Spicy came with Priebus. I often thought that that was a, a loyalty test. Is he made him go out there right. and no, with it, that fake ass story and see if he could do it? But and, that's and that was the test. But that's the incompetence. Yes, that was a loyalty test. Mm -hmm. It was also entirely stupid. Entirely, just oh, entirely God. dumb, dumb. You galvanized the opposition to you mm -hmm. at a time when it would have been much easier to just simply come in. And of course, his his his, his speech. Um, uh, He's straight out of Batman. You know, right? What was the what did he uh, 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 what did, what was the what was the phrase he used about America? Um, I forgot because uh, there's been so yeah, much. There was like seven. I know. Speeches ago. That was, <laughs> seven, maybe ten. <laughs> so uh, you know, it was like a America wreck or the wreck yeah. of America, whatever it was. Um, Whatever but, Bane said in the Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, that, that, <laughs> like, just, lines but I'm just saying, instead of he could have come in and given a speech that said. I know a lot of you people didn't want me. I know that, but I'm I'm your you know I'm your I mean a speech that we now know he was incapable of giving. Like yeah. he's incapable of giving that speech. But had he been a smarter guy, had he been a better guy, to say uh, you know just say the words, and then he could have behind the scenes done all the shit he wanted to do, mm -hmm. because most people would be like, well, he said, mm -hmm. and you would have divided the opposition. As I'm saying, instead. He and he galvanized the opposition. He dared the opposition to come after him, and they're like, "Okay, yeah." And here we are. And so to go back to what you're right. I mean, Putin. You know, if he could have gotten a better guy in, but Trump was his guy. Well, and now with Trump not doing anything, I don't think it'll happen in 2020. But how can we be sure? You know, like we, we've we've cut our our security measures. After we found out our election was hacked, so so now I, that's my biggest fear is the idiot Trump comes in and and gets it done, but there's someone else waiting in the wings five years, ten years from now that will get it done better. Have we really you know? cut our security measures? You know, we the the there are people that have been working in the on our national security for twenty years through different administrations. It doesn't even play to them. There's some really good, hard-working, competent people that are still there. Yes. And but just like the EPA guy who just resigned because he couldn't handle it anymore, just the, it, just the frustration of working in that office with mm -hmm. Scott Pruitt sent him over the edge, and now he's gone. You know, the, those people, that stuff is happening. The, the agent that's actually uh, in Moscow... Who's getting screwed over right now with no support or no nothing? You know, oh, we're trying to kill that story. Don't give that guy anything. Don't give him any support. I'm sure that is happening, David. I, I, you Probably, gotta believe. But I'm thinking a little higher of the people in the field and the people dealing with national security as opposed to the EPA. Right. But I think it's a slow moving train, is, is my point. It's, yeah. It's, it's a slow moving train that those things are becoming less and making it easier. Right. Um, but here's what the, was that, it that slow moving train is very hacker, fast, though. At the hacker uh, in Las Vegas, what is it? Uh, all the hackers get together. Well, the, they got their hands on voting machines, and within 15 right. minutes, right. they had every one of them cracked. 
So, I mean, we, we have these things that we need to come together on and realize that this is our biggest threat. It's really not nuclear weapons. It's really not an invasion. It's really not the immigrants. The biggest threat we have is this cybersecurity thing because it does change public opinion. It does change the way people mm-hmm. think. And I think a lot of I think people I think that 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 is a notion that's realized. Well, mm-hmm. it, but we saw France and the all the, uh, the European nations all believe in it, and the seventeen the thirty six percent of the assholes in this country don't. Well, they saw well, right, but they <laughs> saw what happened in America right. was a slap. That was a, a, a you know a slap across the face of wake up. There are consequences to ignoring this. There are real. You know, uh, there are real consequences. By the way, it was American carnage. <laughs> That's what he said during his night runs. Had to, well, the- had to figure that out. But, but to go to your point, so you're right. More than nuclear weapons, more than conventional weapons, this mm-hmm. is the battleground yeah. of, the, of the 21st century. Mm-hmm. And that, the, the misunderstanding of what happened in 2016, because we still say that the Russians, I, I, I hate it when I hear uh, that the Russians hacked the election. Right. There's no proof that they hacked the election. When you say that, it's like, I understand what you mean. I understand what, what people mean when they say that. But it is the notion that somehow they, although we're getting information but, that they may have actually attempted. The, they were the, attempting. Attempt. Right. They but, did not succeed. But that's what, what the, the real issue, though, is, is not, is really, it really is they interfered with the election. Right. Mm-hmm. They colluded to misinform the public. Which is... And we need to be precise in our language. Yeah. Because it's real easy for people to go for the, for the 20 or the 30% that are always Trump, that nothing he could do would ever change their mind. It just makes it very easy for them to just say, you know, fake news. Right. Uh, it's all fake. Oh, Russia didn't hack the election. There's no proof that they... Because right now there is no proof proof. There's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, stuff swirling around, but there's no proof. There is proof, however, that they interfered. There is proof that they, they use misinformation to a degree that is more sophisticated than most of us can really understand. Right. The Russians are way ahead in this game. And it's mm-hmm. not... Here's why they're way ahead of it. They've been practicing it for a hundred fucking mm-hmm. years. The Russian Revolution was in 1917. Mm-hmm. Okay, the communists came to power in 1917. They've been perfecting this strategy for a hundred years. Even though the Berlin Wall came down and you know the USSR disappeared, don't forget Putin is a former KGB guy, and that attitude remains. And it's starts at the top right um, and the whole notion of using disinformation misinformation as a, as a, as a weapon that's that's old school commie <laughs> you know right. that, that is old school yeah. and they perfected it and I, we're way behind on this I entirely agree is with more precise information and a different way of showing the collusion because you could go out and say this was an RT story on this day and this is Donald yeah. Trump the day after right this is an RT story on this and day. people have and this is you know I mean there have been and, some of those you know, types of you yeah, know comparisons. this is what's going on and this is how we know that something is going on he's using the dark arts basically to win an election <laughs> you know <laughs> Even if he wasn't colluding, he is still undermining yeah. American democracy by using propaganda from Russia to benefit himself. So who's our hero? Snape and Harry Potter pretended to be right. You know, right. He, uh, we only found out at the end that he was the hero. He mm-hmm. even killed Dumbledore. Right. In, in an effort to you know keep so, the, the life. who's who's our Snape? Who's our secret hero? It's me. It's not you, Rob. <laughs> you you do nothing secret. <laughs> uh, is it? I don't know. Is it Mattis? Is it? If we're following along, it's yeah. Bannon. Yeah, right. Yeah. If we're, if we're it's the guy that you'd be like, oh, not him. The alt writer. Yeah. I'm not really alt right. I'm just super left. You thought I was coming from the right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did see. I did and see I'm it. actually a transgendered man. Takes off the mask. <laughs> I saw two different memes from right wing sites this week. One was about the the uh, the plague, and that, af- that. after yeah. the plague, everything uh, the economy was wonderful after yeah. we killed all those people. And another one that uh, gave. Um, population status of different countries around the world and how once they hit a certain point um, their economy stagnated it was all you know 
too many people make the economy stagnate, and it was completely a, like a right-wing firing squad at somebody. Oh my god, let's kill a bunch of people! Let's kill all the white people. <laughs> we kill all the white people, at least I can guarantee I can still get a burrito. And that would go along with Bannon. Is a Bannon, good one. Is Bannon yeah, yeah. is subscribing to that and and, yeah. and wants Unless to. Unless Bannon's our secret hero. Unless. And, and maybe that's what I'm saying is, is he is subscribing to it so he can. So be then the he will be the leaker. It will turn out he's the leaker. What do you do for him to be the secret hero? He would have to shoot Hillary in the head, and she'd have to be in collusion with this. Like oh, I'll right, take the yeah, bullet yeah, for right. the country, you know. And then he'd go on to lead the evil until he turns it all around. And he to gets a special to, moment. Then he, but he's got to make it the giant sacrifice too. Right. He I can't. I don't think this is going to happen. I don't know. Maybe it's not bad. No. no, I don't. Uh, if we're using that analogy, I don't know. It was spicy. <laughs> <laughs> they fired him. Yeah. It was yeah. the movie. That's it. A bit like uh, letting Snape go in after the second movie. Like, yeah. oh, we're, not, we're not even going to have a dark arts class. <laughs> what? You're not tenure. <laughs> what? Funny. We're putting. We're having metal shop instead. What? <laughs> but I'm supposed to... No, no, not. Get to Metal Shop. And it's like they completely save themselves through incompetence. It wasn't even designed like, you just fired the secret hero. No, we just don't want anyone learning anything. <laughs> that's just... That's what it is. Yeah. Betsy DeVos is our secret hero. Oh, my God. And we're... Uh, hey, that she, didn't go through. Did anybody see that? The the one to take all the student debt and give it to one of her cronies? Right, right. Yeah. They took that off the table. That's cool. So, yeah, but but, lar- but again, largely these efforts are failing. They're because what there's... happens with the, when they fail big is they come back smaller, and that one doesn't hit the press. Well, we'll see. So we'll they, see. It's it's kind of the we'll see because this is this is stupid supervillain stuff. This is I've got you trapped, and I'm going to explain the plan because you can't possibly escape. Right. And she's like, ah, so what I'll do is I'll give all the student debt to my friend Leon. <laughs> and they're like, you just told us that you were going to... Right. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> Who said no? Can people say no? I don't know. I don't know what this job entails. What's, you know, this, what's this no word you keep <laughs> saying to me? You realize I did give Donald Trump a lot of money. <laughs> yes, we get it. And he said that this could happen. I'm sure he did. Yeah. But I said a lot of money. <laughs> This, yes. We, no, no. It was money. We, we, Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah, none of that went to us. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh. Uh-oh. They found out about us. The dark heart. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here it comes. Voldemort knows where we're at. You said his name. I shit. Don, Donamort, Volda Trump. <laughs> Volda Trump knows. He's not even that good. No, He's right. not even right. that good. No, 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 you no. cannot ascribe that, that level no. of competency oh, to, God, no. to Donald no. Trump. You can't. You can't. He, he's... He's like a second-tier villain that they put in charge. Yeah, it's like yeah. The, the cronies that Voldemort was hanging around with. Yeah, like if like uh, the uh, if the Malfoy guy was in, in charge of the you know the Legion of Doom. Right. Then what? We wouldn't get anything done. <laughs> and we haven't. That guy can't even keep a house elf. <laughs> that, that's pretty easy too. It really is. Just don't give him clothes. Yep. You got fooled by a grade schooler. I mean, come on. Play like pickles. <laughs> Pickles is playing Donald Trump. Yes, uh, you think he is. Maybe Pickles is our hero. Pickles, he's going to come up and be like, "I'm really a sweet and sour cucumber." <laughs> and then, right? Yeah, and you're uh, gherkin. <laughs> yeah, and I've been jerking your gherkin, President. <laughs> yeah, in your face. No maggot no. cakes for me. No, no, don't use that. No, but jerk- no, no jerking into the face. <laughs> no, That's, it's no. not even pee. <laughs> doesn't apply. But it's salty. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I meant the pickle. Oh. <laughs> well, no one would ever accuse you of a high-protein, low-carb diet like that, so I believe you. <laughs> Nature's harvest. <laughs> mm, how I paid for books in college by John Arkey. <laughs> no, I, I just called mom. I just didn't, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I just didn't buy the books. Right. Then I sell them back and... Use the money to buy pot. But, uh, Gateway drug. <laughs> <laughs> he turned out all right. <laughs> kind of. 
You can hit the button. <laughs> you think we'll get hit by lightning anytime soon to end this? <laughs> it's got to end soon. <laughs> Subscribe to the No Cry Zone on iTunes and Stitcher and at abnormalentertainment.com slash no cry zone. Find the No Cry Zone on Facebook and tweet at No Cry Zone. Email no cry zone podcast at gmail.com. And for more podcasts, comics, books, movies, and more, head to abnormalentertainment.com. You've been listening to the Abnormal Entertainment Network. <laughs>